what I remember most clearly, the reflections in, in the lake and the sense of distance. We lived here for three and a half years. We didn't have any water. An interesting experience. We just took it for granted that that's what we had to do. And a lot of my lake paintings are based on this. My first painting of the Okanagan was, of this scene was done on the lower part of the property where there was an old blue car, just the, the, the crust of it on the side of the hill down there. The inspiration primarily is rooted from my childhood where I was first interested in, uh, you know, looking at sunsets or looking at uh, the overlapping quality of the Okanagan Mountains and the lake and so on. So the landscape was my primary um, influence and still remains that in the sense of vision. When I was three years old, when I first had my first tops, I would like to look at the top and just look at the colors merging until, you know, I just, I just keep cranking them and they break down and then I'll get another one and another one. I recall vaguely just looking at how the colors blended around the outside of the top as it was spinning. So I think in a sense, I was created to be an artist. You know, I was, I wasn't at a place where, I, you know, there was a clean slate and I could be anything I wanted. I was an artist. Living in the Okanagan in some ways has impacted my career for the better. In other ways, over the years, I've kind of thought this is maybe not where I should be. Maybe I should be going to New York or, you know, having these big dreams, especially as a young artist. At a certain point, I decided that my temperament was more suited to be connected with the land, with the landscape, and not so much focused on the, the art world and so on. And it didn't become important to me to go to a bigger center, it kind of actually was detrimental to my creativity in the sense of meditative quality that I needed to um, produce the work that I do. 30 years ago we purchased the Lloyd Gallery and since then we have been working with John and selling his paintings. In his own way and in an Okanagan way, he actually has brought so many beautiful pieces out. I feel that he, since I knew him and saw his work, it reminded me of Salvador Dali. My inspiration comes mostly from works that uh, other artists have done as well as nature. He's got Christmas tree lights in here now, which is good. So there's a kind of a mix there and there's also a sense of inspiration that comes from music and my faith, which is a Christian faith. So there's a, an amount of a mix there that is in the supernatural. Faith has influenced my art in, in the sense of believing that there is a spiritual dynamic that works in our minds even while we're sleeping and while we're awake. This sense of when we look at something and we find it more pleasant, like a certain scene or something we're looking at. When I think of what's out there, trees or rocks or a landscape, I see the nature of God in it. I think it's important to reflect that in my work. So that's why I take so much care in when I'm doing a painting. It's, I want it to look and get that extra element which is beyond purely what it looks like. Different elements that gel over time are an extension of my own personal narrative. So that kind of brings things together in the sense of vision and even music influencing the work. The artists that I originally studied were of the surreal side of uh, painting, not the abstract. Initially, I liked the group of seven in Canada, Lauren Harris in particular. At that point, I discovered Salvador Dali's work, and being an adolescent, I thought perhaps that was the thing that you looked at in the 1960s, was this Salvador Dali kind of art. At some point, I realized I needed to understand design more, and I became interested in arts of China, particularly the Ming Dynasty, 
and the work of the Coast Salish artists of British Columbia, Emily Carr and the American painter uh, Evan Durrell. So those artists were important for landscape and the development of different qualities that I was sort of working toward. I was interested in Chesley Bonestell. He was a space artist. That brought in my interest in astronomy. And I used to look at the planets and think, I wonder what it's like out there. I've always had an interest in the distance, what's out there, the sense of exploration. In grade five, I saw this movie of the planets. They were showing the planets and describing how big they were and what they were composed of. And to me, there was a certain mystery in that. And of course, the NASA missions were happening at that time as well. And so that was rather interesting to be growing up in that exciting time. My parents were very supportive of the art. They gave me about seven years of grace at home. And then they said, it's, it's time for you to leave because this isn't working out. You're not making a, enough money to make it on your own. That was a good learning experience. They never encouraged me any more with going to art school. It didn't inspire me. I needed time to get away from education, away from the world, time to go inward to dig into those things that I was seeing already in my dreams. With me, I was looking for something poetic or symbolic. Much of my work comes through dreams and there's an element sometimes where I'll just be grasping for something new to paint and so I go into this space where I, I have to pray about it and I seem to get a release in that and a sense of resolution and faith. His uh, thinking is totally different from anybody I know and uh, he is quiet but he has a beautiful sense of humor painful when they squeeze my eyes like this. Ah. <laughs> I've always felt that John is a master. He has such a unique thinking of what art is about and what he wants to bring out into the art. When I'm doing paintings, I tend to think of a painting as a seed planted in the ground. I think of a painting as going on after I've left this earth and the painting speaking to future generations and always being there. It's something I like to leave behind to make a statement about this age and even in the sense of some visions that I've had uh, seem to point to a future age. Mm -hmm. 